welcome everybody. This is the uh, Pono Planning Commission regular meeting on the 21st of January already, 2020. Um, just very quickly, I'd like everybody to introduce themselves, please. And if we start with our guest, Mr. Sullivan, down there. My name is Jim Sullivan. I am with the Bennington County Regional Commission working with the Planning Commission on their uh, land use bylaw update. Go ahead, Ronnie. Ron Bizzo. Sid Smithers. Mike Slattery, Chairman. Jim Winchester, PC member. Megan Randall. Barbara Chiglapper. Thank you all. Just Thank so people that know, at home know us. I didn't get any volunteers from anybody, so if you don't mind, take, <laughs> take no further. I will be the note taker. Happy to do it. Well, uh, I won't get too far ahead of you here. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Let me get my coat off. I, I was the secretary at the last DRB meeting. He's this, this is payback now. <laughs> this is, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just take a two, 20 second recess while I find my bag and take out things like pencils and pens and stuff. Oh, we got our app together here. Now, except for Jessica, I haven't heard from anybody else. Um, absentees, I would say, John Bushy's probably got other things on his pretty, pretty, pretty good excuse. The poor guy, man, oh man, um, that was just brutal to hear that. It really was. That's a scary, scary thing. All of us that burn wood in the winter time and everything. Man. Thinking of you guys. Okay. Um, let's review the uh, tonight's agenda. Um, uh, four parts to starting with the approval of this agenda, and then we need to uh, approve the minutes of uh, uh, December 17th, 2019. If we can, we'll see who was present and if we have a quorum of those that are present. Um, we'll hear from Mr. Sullivan from the BCRC, and then I, we're going to talk to, well, excuse me. We're just going to hear a few minutes from Barbara True Weber in regards to the Energy Committee. If everybody could change that, and when I get a motion, if we can motion reflecting that change. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor of tonight's agenda say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? We're in good shape. Let's take a let's take a few minutes and look at uh, the 17th. So. Mm -hmm. And Jim, I know you felt bad that we excluded you from that meeting a week before Christmas or so. <laughs> I have stain. It's okay. Are you in there? Uh-oh, we don't have a quorum again. Why, uh, you weren't listed as there or not there. Were you? Mike, that was man. me. What's the matter with you? Jimmy, yep, you're on there. Where is he? Is no, he's not. No, he's not. I don't November, see him. Oh, that's November 19th? Yeah, so November, no. December 17th. I, I gave you a December 17th uh, here. Why don't you just, here. I, I just, the two things I handed out. You did the budget. Okay, let's write in uh, Mr. Winchester, who was unavoidably detained somewhere. I called him. No, no, no. You're just going to do the budget. There's a nasty night. Oh, I, we talked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, yeah. I think yeah. that's the same reason. I, I didn't say about too much. About the budget. You worked on the budget. I didn't say too much bad about you when I got here. I was, <laughs> I, I've got thick skin. Yeah. <laughs> she said, where's the mayor? <laughs> it's okay. All right, Mr. Chairman, would you tell me where we are and what we're doing so I can take accurate minutes? I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> we are just now uh, spending a few minutes reviewing the minutes, and then I'm going to ask for a motion. Or the minutes of what? December 17th. December 17th. Okay. <laughs> I'll move that we approve the minutes of December 17 as submitted. With, with the exception of adding Jim Winchester's name to board members absent. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a motion. We have a second. 
second. Got it. We have a second. Um, any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. And we're abstaining. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold we, don't have a quorum. we don't have a quorum. No. No. I was just wondering. We don't have a quorum. Didn't I just say I'm going to look to see twice. if we had a quorum? You voted twice, so we're all set. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so um, we have to strike that motion um, in favor of tabling this until we have. I move we table it until we have a quorum. Second? I second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It takes a two thirds vote. Sorry. Of the it's good that we have a parliamentarian. Of the, of the people. <laughs> the but it's of the she people present. You've been taking classes? Yeah. Is oh, this okay. a, well, this would be unanimous. Really? Taking classes? Okay. Um, Jim, if you can bear with us just for a second. Um, we're just going to, we're going to talk about the, um, we're going we're gonna, uh, to have Barbara talk a little bit about the um, energy committee. I, and okay. I, just I can talk about it. that too. Yes, please do. <laughs> I, just, I want to preface it by. However, it says presentation by Barbara True Weber regarding the economic committee. I know, yes, we but, just changed yeah. but we changed it in okay. the motion. We scratched through that and put energy below it. <laughs> yeah. We moved to I'd do get so. you up to speed. We're, we're, we're hand. <laughs> Thank you. I need to hold that help. Thanks. Yeah. Ron, Ronnie was taking notes till you got here, so we're, we're okay. <laughs> we're all right. Um, I talked to Barbara, I forget, like a month ago, and she mentioned to me that she uh, was considering um, not uh, continuing on the, on the committee. Um, I'll let her tell you the reasons why. I didn't argue with you at the time. I knew exactly. Do you want to argue with me? Do not. Do not. I respect a thousand percent your, your decision and know exactly why you made it. But why don't you go ahead and just tell us a little bit about what's well, been going on. Well, um, there's... A only ever been two people on the energy committee. Uh, Bill Barnes, uh, Megan's brother-in-law, mm -hmm. and myself. And um, it's been slow going for us to even get organized mm -hmm. and move forward with anything that resembles um, energy action of any kind. Now the energy committee is supposed to um, be a committee of citizens um, appointed by the select board. Some places don't have um, a select board uh, appointment that they're just a, sort of a free-ranging citizens committee, uh, which Jim can talk more about if he wants to. Um, so, um, the idea is to, first of all, save the municipality or the township money on their energy bills. So how can we, um, what, what sort of recommendations can we make or what sort of action can we take that would reduce the energy bill for the municipality? And there have been a lot of different things done. Um, changing uh, street lighting to LEDs, um, getting new machinery for the wastewater uh, plant that doesn't take as much energy. Um, I think uh, it's Montpelier that has a revolving fund so that people can withdraw money from that to, to um, implement uh, projects. And then the, the money that is saved on energy bills goes back into that fund. So there's all kinds of ideas, there's all kinds of um, things happening with that. Um, Bill and I met a couple of times with Mike Walker and um, he was uh, very supportive and, um, and very informative and uh, Bill and I were really depending on him um, for his expertise and for his knowledge of, um, say, the grant funding resources and that sort of thing. Um, and so when this um, 
shall we call it, a challenge <laughs> arises in the town, it was really perplexing to me. And the fact that Michael was, um, and, and I had worked uh, very well with Michael, and he was very supportive and very forthcoming. And the fact that um, he was fired for uh, reasons that seemed incomprehensible to me, I wondered how I was going to continue um, in um, the, the path of um, uh, doing uh, energy uh, uh, reduction stuff. Um, and the fact that the town itself seems divided and at odds with each other in sort of a rancorous kind of way, it seems to me like it was better for me to resign and not be tied into whatever it is that's conflictual in the town and um, that if I were released from uh, the appointment by the town, I could still do things in the town. Uh, for instance, I could, as a private citizen, uh, work with uh, Efficiency Vermont to, to uh, promote the Button Up campaign in the fall, where there's a lot of weatherization that can be done, particularly on mobile homes that would save people money and they would live more comfortably. So I, I talked it over with Michael and I talked it over with Bill and we have come to the conclusion that, that we are in fact going to resign. Um, I'm in the process of drafting a letter now uh, so it hasn't been submitted. Um, so that's where I stand at the present moment. If someone could persuade me otherwise, if, if I could be persuaded that the select board process would smooth out and be more comprehensible and coherent, um, I would reconsider. But I don't, I don't see that happening. Would you wait for a new board in March? I might reconsider in March. No, I'll just say that. We yeah. Have this, to be There's going to be a change, probably. But, but I, yeah, who's going to run? We don't know yet. Yeah, and there are, I mean, there are a couple. But you could hold back until and see what happens, you know, to well, see if you like the new board or whatever. She hadn't submitted there. her letter of resignation I yet. Maybe, I yeah. maybe she won't yeah. until there's a new board. Right. I yeah. just don't <clears throat> understand what's happening. As, as a relative newcomer in Pownall, I've been here eight years now, I don't understand what the problem is. I, I get this on Facebook, which says, Pownall is a white collar, uh, blue collar town. That it's for blue collar families uh, that have been here for generations and... Um, it's not a machine. It's not a machine. And I, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand what the animosity is. I, do, I just don't. Not sure. Anyone no truly one does. does. <laughs> but, I've been here 60 years and I don't. Surely Let, somebody knows something. <laughs> Let, let's stay. I, yeah. I, I have some theories. Okay. But, uh, but let's yeah. stay within you serving in this, what we right. consider here on the Planning Commission to be a very important role. Well, it's in our plan. And we apologize for not being more supportive. You know, when you lost Michael Walker, you lost your champion. You know, he could go we to lost the town. Ama amazing resource. It, it doesn't mean that you know we couldn't still do that, but I'm, I won't argue. With, I won't argue and try and keep you, uh, make you do something you don't want to do. But when you have more resources being tied to the town, which is tied to the BCRC, to then find out what's going on in Montpelier, aside from just button up Vermont through mm -hmm. uh, efficiency, efficiency Vermont. Vermont. My understanding of the position was that um, some towns it's almost a full-time position. Correct me if I'm wrong, it may even be a salaried position in some towns. For the most part, I think it's... You know? not, not in our region, but in some towns. In some, in the bigger regions. <laughs> yes. I mean, they, they need that kind of coordination between feds, states, You're local. You were saying that energy... Committee yeah, 
chair of the energy or the ch or the committee. chair or the energy and then there's also an energy coordinator energy coordinator which was what I was getting at earlier but when both you and Bill wanted to be on it it was then uh, Michael Walker decided to make it a, a committee mm -hmm. so my only my only concern is that you'll do a lot I know you will it's kind of your 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 thing you love it and that what a what a cool thing to do for Pono. Would you have more resources at your fingertips if a you, if everything smoothed out and sh wait a minute and you stayed in your current position? So I do like the fact that maybe March is a couple months and let's see who runs, who doesn't run, and you know you can you'll be able to gauge I think by. 11 o'clock that night as to whether you're going to have a, a board that's going to support these endeavors or not support these endeavors. But whatever board it is, they should, if it, if you get two or three new members on that board, what I would hope you would do would be to go, you and Bill will go back before that board and explain the relevance of the energy committee and what you can do for the municipality and more importantly, what you can do for its citizens. So that's really what that's all about. There's no doubt. I mean, the lights, the street lights, the LED lights, we'll have a new, brand new, super energy efficient, hopefully, town hall. Town hall hopefully. Um, but there's, that's the beginning of the iceberg in a town of 35, 3,600 people. Mm -hmm. right. There's a lot of work, I think, especially when you have as many mobile homes as, as we have and people struggling to pay their rent, let alone you know their energy bills and mm -hmm. and you know so okay so i'm willing to i'm i'm willing to wait for the for the elections okay and see what happens Great. thank That's you Jim. but um i don't want to be attacked i i don't oh, have no, the no, energy no, no. No. i and and the way some people yeah. have in fact been attacked yeah. for their uh concern about climate and climate change and yep. all of that. I think any town anywhere you go, you're going to get a division somewhat on climate change, but the attacks are needless and wrong. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. And I don't blame you a bit when you told me that. Um, being uncomfortable, trying to get something done, it's not how volunteers should be made to feel. Ever. Did a really great job on the energy um, fair. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was nice. Yeah. It was really terrific. That was, I was I out of town. I understand the, it was phenomenal. And that happened because of Michael Walker and Madison Kramer. Um, yeah. Yep. So let's see what happens. Okay. I know, you know, we're all uh, we're all feeling the same way and. I think, speaking for the group, uh, we clearly understand your feelings. So, yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I add a little Ab bit? Absolutely. I mean, I can't speak to the situation in Powell at all. That's yeah. My thing. That's the, okay. The, uh, <laughs> we wouldn't expect to. The, um, you know, the, in, in general, though, the, the, one of the nice things about energy is uh, however you come at it, whether it's a concern over climate or, or a concern over. Um, helping people save money and be more comfortable in their home or supporting local economic development. I think everybody can find a reason to, to, you know, pull in the same direction, even though <coughs> perhaps the objectives are a little bit different, you know. So um, hopefully it's something that people can get together on. Um, yeah. And, and you're, you're right that the BCRC is, um, you know, we, we're working with, um, efficiency Vermont in particular but we have a long-standing interest in energy planning um, but we have to roll out a number of um, uh, programs and, and educational initiatives around energy as part of our agreement with uh, Efficiency Vermont and it's really important for us because you know we just you know we can we can organize these things but we can't get the word out as effectively right. as people in local communities can so we'll be doing workshops you know, with with Brock, I hope on weatherization. You know, on top of the button up stuff, and we'll be doing workshops on um, heat pumps and um, how to you know <coughs> save money on electricity in general. 
um, and, uh, and the, the notion of um, energy service providers or, or getting contractors and potentially fuel dealers to get involved in delivering weatherization and efficiency services um, and alternative heating s uh, services. <laughs> It might be a little, it might be a heavy lift, but we're committed to try. But to to get that information out in the local communities is really you know we we've been more effective in the last year or so since uh, you know Madison worked with us to help yeah, form energy committees and she's yeah. she's moved on now from her Vista position and so Allison Stroll and I are are kind of teaming up to try to keep the momentum going. Um, but there's also um, so we're we're actually you know we have a, a round table coming up next week to get as many local energy committee members together as we can to kind of plan out a schedule for the coming year. Okay. So it's um so it's easier if you have an energy committee or coordinator to get that information out that you need to get yeah, out. Yeah, so much of yeah there's so many things that are in place. It's yeah. not like it's not like you know we're trying to figure out how to do weatherization or, if it, right. or, or, or alternative heating systems. We know how to do them. We need help getting the information Word out to people about the incentives and the rebates and how you go about who to talk to, who the, the contacts are. Um, and so that's that's kind of our reliance on folks, you know, like Barbara and, and other people in the local communities. So yeah. So I, I, I can... Uh, you know, appreciate that it's it's hard to kind of get up and get running with this stuff, especially if you've got some discord and opposition. But um, I, whether um, you continue or somebody else, I, I I'm just here to say somebody in Poundle needs to, You're here to, <laughs> cheer. Needs to be, our, be our contact, and yeah. we will give you what support we can. Yeah. And by the way, I know that the Bennington uh, Energy Committee is considering recommending. Uh, energy coordinator for Bennington and so our our conversation was about sharing a coordinator oh, with yeah. some oh, that's uh, a great idea. Yeah. regional um, <coughs> positions so yeah, absolutely. If, they, if they do go ahead with that um, we might consider sure hmm. towns share ZAs they share a host of different things so that would be uh, that'd be a good idea, and then you know, then combining resources on that um, could help. What kind of does do you know what kind of numbers we're talking about? No. Asking for. Do you know what coordinators, part-time coordinators? I really, I really don't, and I'm not actually sure what the, any details of what the Bennington. I, th I don't think are, there are details. Are considering. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a range of different things you can do from you know, full time to part time to yeah. uh, you know we we've defaulted to volunteer committees being supported by some very part time effort at the regional commission, which is a lot better than we had uh, five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, right, still but, not uh, ideal, but better. Yeah. Uh, we do know that <laughs> energy coordinators uh, make their salary back. In energy savings, yeah. so that would be the best practice, right? That right. would be the goal. Right. Good. Thanks for sharing all that with us. It's uh, I think it's important for people at home to hear that, to know what's going on, and um, and let's um, let's work with the board in in March, and we can go. I'll go with you to make that presentation based on the, how important that was. We spent a lot of time on that section we did. in the town plan. We did. You well, know, but uh, didn't uh, Brian Harris said he wanted to rewrite the town plan? Regarding economic development. I don't know All where right. that came from, but I don't want to I don't want to go there now. I'll, I'll ask that question Thursday night at the select board meeting. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> thank you. Okay. You're keep, keep us posted. All right. Jim, sorry. Thank, and I, I knew your input would be valuable there. That's why I bumped her up in the agenda. Oh no, that that's yeah. good. I you know people know me know that um, I tend no. to, I I tend to um, jump right in when it comes to so. discussions about what energy. So um, I'm good. I'm good. good with that. Um, so I I kind of wanted to do a, a little catch up um, where we are with the with the bylaws and. Um, yes, please. 
<laughs> yeah, and then and then um, and then I have a few uh, specific. So I'll give a broad overview, of some stuff, and, and okay. then I, and then there's a few specific uh, questions that I, I thought we could discuss tonight because my my objective would really be by the February meeting, the next meeting, to have a, a full draft of, yeah. of the bylaw. And I mean we're really pretty close now, but I I got a few lingering issues that I need to okay. button down. So. so just to back up, in, yep. in December you sent us three of the last four sections that you had been working on, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't looked at them since the first day that, that they came out. So you sent them to everybody from what I could see. So, I tried to. So at least <laughs> with your, yeah, I know it's crazy down here, right? Well, I still can't get everybody to uh, have a group email. Uh, I can't get all those messages out. So that, it's there. Everybody should, now that we're rejuvenated in the new year, get mm -hmm. back, read those, and incorporate what we're going to, big picture stuff we're going to talk about tonight. And then try and be ready to go over that draft or the majority of it in February. And then maybe start talking about public hearings and things if we wrap things up in March or April. Yeah, I, I would. It, it, there's been a lot. Uh, we've um, proposing a lot of changes to the to the bylaw, and I, I think it's going to take, um, you know, two or three meetings to, to get to button those to, up to, to review. Once we have a full draft, to kind of go from the beginning to the end to make sure everybody's comfortable with everything that's in there and to, yeah. to discuss it. So uh, I, I don't necessarily want to predict just when you'll be ready to go to a, yeah. a, a hearing, but I, I would like to, like I said, my, my objective would be to have before your February meeting delivered to you a complete draft. And I wasn't trying to pin you down, by the way. But. I, I, I don't mind. We could, we could, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm retiring in two and a half years, you know. We can just, <laughs> we just can keep just, it going. <laughs> we can wrap this thing up in two and a quarter years. Uh, yeah. Let somebody else take it on. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> So, so if you want, I'll just, I'll give you a Please. real quick, so what I sent out in December, um, it, the most of the work that I had put into it, if you'll remember our, no, the November, was it the November meeting, we spent, Michael Batcher came to the meeting, right. mm -hmm. my house, and we had a lot of discussion about the um, flood hazard mm -hmm. and river corridor regulations. Right. So with that, that kind of gave you guys a, a sense of it, and, 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 um, uh, you know what that was about, and so what what I did was I took the templates that we got from the state that Michael had um, gotten and turned them into a new section six of the bylaw. So section six is entitled Flood Hazard and River Corridor Districts. Do we have that? Hmm? Did did you distribute that? I sent it out. I hope I, I know. I sent it to everybody. Whether or not it everyone received like it, it was. If not, I'll was, make sure Jessica gets dated, everybody copies. It, it's dated at the the top. The, the draft December seventeenth. Right. So that December seventeenth draft has this new section six in it. Now sections six point one through six point four of that are the um, the flood. Um, well, six one is purpose, but six two through six four is the the flood hazard area regulations, yeah. which is something that you've had for for some time. But this is the state regs. Yeah. The, the, so the, these are the regulations that you are essentially required to have for right. the state for the town to be for any anyone who lives in or owns a business in the town um, to be eligible for the. Um, the, the FEMA flood insurance program. Right. So, you know, the, the mapping is all based on the, the FEMA flood insurance rate maps. The standards are all kind of dictated by the state requirements. What I did was I, I took those and massaged them into your bylaw, I hope, to, <laughs> to make it fit with the rest of your bylaw so the references were all okay. correct and tied together. Um, so. You know, I w you should take a look at it and see if there's any, you know, red flags in there that really cause you some concern. 
and there might be some different ways we can we can treat some of these things but for the most part you know that that's kind of uh, uh, you know between the state and FEMA um, what they say we, you kind of have to have to mm -hmm. be eligible for the, the the state program now the the rest of that section um, six six point five um, I don't know if I think it just mm. 6.5 and um, on through the rest of it um, is, is a section that deals with river corridors. And that, so that's a different animal, although related certainly to the special flood hazard area. It's a different, technically a different area and a different, slightly different issue. So it talks about building an expansion in the corridor. It talks it? about a lot of a lot of stuff, and it, it, but the river corridor area isn't necessarily the same as the flood hazard area, as as Michael pointed out. Right. The flood hazard area is areas that flood with a certain probability of certain frequency. Um, the river corridor area is an area that you know where the land is susceptible to like fluvial erosion. So, right. so where things will wash away right. as the river changes its meanders over time, and and those things aren't covered by the the, the FEMA stuff, but they're in Vermont. A lot of times they're they're more important. You know, most of the damage from Irene, as was pointed out, was really you know Changing erosion course. related, <laughs> as as opposed to yeah. you know yeah. flood inundation. So. You're not required to have that in your in your bylaws at all, but if you do have it, and and you have it and it meets the the state standards, um, then your your um, the, you, the town receives certain benefits like higher reimbursement rates. Um, you know if there if there's a, a you know a, a declared disaster and and you get some reimbursement. Oh, I see. So you get reimbursed at a slightly higher rate if you have river corridor regulations. So the the template that we got from the state was, I thought, really, um, really pretty compl complex. Okay. <laughs> so I I did what I could to, to... Boil it down. Boil it down to the essential elements and make it work Excuse in me, your bylaws. Excuse me, do bylaw. we have maps for what in panel is... The flood hazard and what is yeah, the right. river core. Yeah, and I, I had thought about bringing those um, to tonight's meeting because my class are made up, but um, we have current ones in our in our bylaw book. Yeah, like your Small. current bylaws, we, we should have the the special flood hazard area. And I don't the, know if they have the river core. The stuff Michael had was a lot. Yeah more in depth about the river corridor right. studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So because I don't think we ever adopted river so corridor planning. No, in the past. We, we, you, you haven't yet. I think it's in your plan to, to do it. But right. but the it is. but what I what we would do is um, you know when I get the full draft together as part of the mapping component. The maps would be part of it. Yeah, that, well they have to be because okay. they're really <coughs> districts, you know. Right. So um, so we want to be clear on that. Okay. The river corridor isn't a really expansive area. I mean, you guys right. are mostly, you know, um, your, your issues are mostly with the Hoosick uh, yeah. River, right. and in the River Corridor areas, um, is you know, it aren't S's this part where it S is here? Yeah. So, so where you see, yeah, and I don't know if the River Corridor is spelled out on that, but but where no, you get not. those where you get those meander movements yeah. in particular. Those are areas that, if they're flat, you know, they, they suggest that the river will eventually eat into that yeah. area. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so there's special restrictions and regulations. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had quite a study portal. done seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so there's there's good information. There's good maps on sure. it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether or not you agree with them, that there's good maps on it. And you know, one of the big issues was um, that we talked about at the November meeting was. Um, uh, the, the viability for certain development scenarios at the racetrack property given the flood hazard and river corridor stuff. But that's something I wanted to talk about yep, a little okay. bit. But so, so that was the far and away the most work I did um, between you know the November and the December drafts is that section six. And um, we'll, we'll walk through it um, when we, we go over the whole thing. Um, but 
take a look at it. Especially with a, six point five on. Yeah, yeah, ta- yeah, yeah. Because that you know you don't have to have that in your right. bylaw. I mean, you know, because it's where it, where you do have river corridor designation. It's pretty restrictive. Um, you know, especially outside of designated village centers and things, it's it, it very quite restrictive on what you can do with development. I mean, one would argue for good reason. You know, because yeah. you don't want to yeah. allow or encourage development in a place in where you know it could be washed away. Right. But be, it is pretty could restrictive. Be river next year. So, so you know, take take a take a close look at that section in particular. A lot of the other stuff that, that's in the bylaws is, is kind of like you know maybe a a new take on uh, you know old business. You know, you know, permitted uses and setbacks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is uh, this is a little bit <coughs> new and different. New so, in here, yeah. So I, I would encourage you to take a really close look at Section Six, especially I said six point five and the River Corridor standards. Then we can make, you know, then we can see if it makes sense for Ponell to yep. have it. Mm. Yeah. And and then um, so most recently, I just I just pass this out. This, I had a very little bit of work to do um, <laughs> to finish. The, the, the drafting of the main body of the bylaw. There were like five short sections at the end of the bylaw, and I, I um, merged them into one, um, section nine. And so that's the bottom of that page, I think 66 over on 67 is, but it, it's just administrative stuff about, you know, uh, um, amendments, and interpretation, and validity, and amendment. No, Nothing terribly exciting at all. But the the exciting thing about that was that was the last part of the bylaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. You saw the, light at the end of the tunnel. That's the end. <coughs> that's the end. Now that said, there's a couple other things that um, I promised you. So this this one I'll pass around. This is my working draft, and it's still. A, but I wanted to give you an idea of what it would look like of the new. Land use matrix. What, what you need oh, for yeah. an application, in other words. Well, all this, all this is, is basically. Remember that that in the current bylaw, there's many, many pages. Oh, of, okay. Of yeah, districts and uses and stuff for like every that. Zone. So yeah. we've kind of tried. I've kind of tried to boil that down and put like in which districts, which uses are permitted, and what the approvals look like. Is it an administrative approval? Is it an approval with just site plan? Is it a permitted use with site plan approval required, or is it a conditional use? And you have so, it down to five zones. Well, yeah, because I'm I am assuming, and that was um, something to talk about, um, that we're com- we're merging the village and commercial, um, and uh, there's another zone question I have, but that's for more. So again, I I still had to I have to reconcile a couple things here, and there's some blank spots which are, you know, there, there's some things in the bylaw that. Um, you know, you don't need a permit for, and so you know, if, I, I'm a little concerned if people are looking through here, they might say, Oh, you're not allowing agriculture, you know, but right. mm-hmm. you don't need a permit for an agricultural use. And similarly, you know, we had the forest district, and all the uses in the forest district are kind of forest related, but in most places that's allowed by right, too. So, I, I haven't quite figured out how to incorporate all those things. Um, and there's just a, a, I thought it was. We did a pretty good job in making sure that everything meshed right, but there were a few things like in the multifamily dwellings and and um, a couple things where I, I have to make sure that I, everything matches up well. <laughs> All so, of your conditional uses require site plan approval. Yes. <coughs> yes. Makes sense. Yeah. <coughs> and we we've yeah. written that we've written that in so that um, to try to expedite things so that. Um, you know that whether it's permit a permitted use that requires site plan approval or a conditional use that requires site plan approval, um, you know it's still something that can be reviewed by the the development review board in one hearing. Um, it's just a uh, with a conditional use. There's uh, there's additional conditional use criteria that are are thrown into the mix, and we've really done as much as we could to try to because um, you guys have all, all expressed an interest in um, trying to you know, make the the development process more predictable and, and understandable. So try to really limit the conditional uses yep. and make more things permitted uses with site plan approval yep. required. So, you know, 
again, I, I know I got a couple things I got to work out in this, but um, and I'll add some explanations to the end of it. But take a look and see if yeah. you like the format and if it makes sense to you. Um, so we can talk about that too at the next meeting. Well, huge improvement over the 28 pages it takes up in the current bylaw. <laughs> well, I do like the format. I think it's easy to yeah, it's nice. User easy friendly. We can uh, we can even alphabetize it easily enough. I just put them down in the order that I came to them, but um, we can make it clear. But it's you know, it, hopefully it makes it clear. It's like okay, I can go in this district for this use. I can just go get a permit from the zoning administrator, or I have to uh, submit an application for site plan approval, and then you have to refer back to the bylaw to see just what you need to include yep. with that. But hopefully it makes it. Much a lot, easier. A lot more straightforward. Jim, would um, an accessory dwelling unit, would a tiny house be safe? Because I just read an article. Oh, about I it. saw it. You sent it to so, me. Yeah. Yeah. It's saying that it, tiny houses are becoming very popular with seniors. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. Granny pods. Granny mm -hmm. pods. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, I thought, wow. Get new one. We have some tiny houses that, so, uh, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of working on on 346 and yeah, a lot 87. of people What's talk about um, where, where's oh, that? that doing a tiny house development. He, he, there was one down at the there's house. The one right down yeah, at very the, nice. Yeah. Right down the oh, Doug? end of 346. Doug, Doug. Yeah. What's his last name? Kaminsky. Yeah, Doug Kaminsky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kaminsky. Yeah, they're they're, uh, they're um, a fascinating innovation. I mean, I, yeah, but I, but I'm just asking, would that be considered an accessory dwelling unit? So, so under the definition of an accessory no, dwelling unit, that, that has to be that. an accessory dwelling unit. So oh, it would right. be it would be on a property where there is already uh, like a one or two family residential. Right. So mother some, people, apartment some people over would the use garage. them that way. They yeah, use them so, for grandma out in the back. So if, but if you had, it, the way the bylaws <laughs> written now, and the way that most towns are My interpreting apologies. this. Is it like if you a have <laughs> a um, if you have like a, a vacant lot and you decide to your new house on the vacant lot is going to be a tiny house? Yeah. Um, you know, four hundred square feet or whatever. It's you can't smaller do it. than that. Well, like, conceivably you do it, but no, you would have to do it the same way you would do any other house. So you it would be treated the same as if okay. it were an eight thousand okay. square foot mansion. And what if there were so, like a, a collection of them, <laughs> like a um, like a trailer park. You could do that. Houses. You could do that under our new, our new planned unit development provisions planned in the bylaws. Okay. I would think. Yeah, <coughs> I see some really interesting. Um, you well, know, it sounded like a way to attract people. Tiny house, tiny house um, communities or yeah. or subdivisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're very they're cute. And, um, yeah, some of them are developed and, in a way needed. that they, you know, that they share certain things. Like they they maybe have shared parking or yeah. you know community. Building or building. things like that, because if you use your tiny house as uh, you know basically a place to sleep and cook your meals, maybe you want a little bit some other. Yeah. You want you want a little dip, you, occasionally you want to get out of your four hundred square feet and but still be inside. Yeah. I, so I just, so if yeah. there's if you know so sometimes these little developments will have like a little you know medium sized community yeah. um, building too, so you can go down there and hang out. Much so anyway, so I think I think it's a great idea, but there's nothing in your bylaw that prevents tiny houses or prevents tiny house developments. Okay, good. So. But, but but if we I ever looked at the I didn't bring with me the drafts that you've sent out, but the present bylaw is a prohibitive bylaw. Yeah. It says you may not use any land or building in, in Fowl except as permitted herein. Yeah. So if you don't have it in there, it's not permitted. Yeah, but but uh, there there isn't any there isn't anything in the bylaw I don't believe now that limits the size of a right of single, a single family, family or dwelling. two family dwellings. It would count so that. so okay. you could have a you you just wouldn't be able to say you know I get you know I I get special consideration for having a. Uh, really small house. It's just you have to get it permitted the same way you would oh, any oh, other house. Okay, sure. Um, so, you know. right. So we we'll determine if we have to break it out. And there's you know there's there's one of those things is like you know there's tiny houses on wheels 
and you know mm-hmm. the, and those treated differently. Yeah. Well, and that's like a trailer. It's a trailer. Yeah, to me, right. they're, they're, those, <laughs> are, those are, those are like, <laughs> those <laughs> are like <laughs> uh, we treat those like like you would probably uh, you know. I uh, think we should zone them all in one place, right at the top of Skippery Road and Fowler's Way. There's some big fields up there. <laughs> yeah, I would love to have. We'll put about a, two hundred of those tiny. Grandma, and grandpa there. houses up there. I've yeah. got at least 200 cousins. Be perfect. <laughs> there was a proposal in North Adams for a tiny house hotel. Mm-hmm. Wow. 50 units with a common building with dining facilities and a bar and a restaurant. And How did that go? Did it pass? It's proposed. My, my client chickened out. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think, um, you know, it, it's it's interesting concept. I mean, I, I, I think that you know, it, it pe- people got to the, our average house size kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, somebody came in with this tiny yeah. house idea, and they're really, really small. I think there's probably there's probably like a, a like a small house movement that's needed. You yeah, know, yeah. maybe yeah. like a thousand to twelve hundred square feet. I looked, I looked the other day. Oh I just googled to see what the increase in single-family residential structures from 1940 to oh, really? 19. Uh, to 2020, and with the exception of one year, 1959, houses have always gotten bigger, mm-hmm. square yeah. foot wise. Mm-hmm. And the average house in the United, the average newly constructed house in the United States right now is something like 2,600 square feet. Hmm. That's a pretty big house. Yep. Yeah. And high ceilings. Yeah. I mean, there goes your energy. Yeah, yeah. 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 We exactly. could we could talk a lot about that, yeah. but I know that. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, well, the topic for another day, but I I agree that's a it's an issue. This is uh, very cool. I'm, okay. Well, I'm the, excited about this. That All right. So that so that so now that. my my questions for uh, discussion and and something w- the first one is easy because you told me and I wanted to make sure I get it right because I did not have it right um, and I don't have it right. Okay, the, we're looking at this chart here. You can, minutes. or you can look at the bylaw, or you can not look at anything and just tell me. So, um, <laughs> mobile mobile home parks, which we have to allow somewhere in Pownall, um, which are the districts where they are supposed to be allowed? Because there was a, in the old bylaw, there was a conflict between the table and the sections. Mm. And I want to make sure I get it right in both places. Do you remember how the bylaw. What the conflict was? Uh, in in one help. place, I think it said they were allowed in like the rural residential, and in a, and in the other place, it was allowed in right. you know, village it was, and commercial. It, it was supposed to be changed to village only. So village only. It was supposed to be changed to village only. I was going to ask Nelson Brownell how we, if that was just an error on our part when we changed the bylaws the last time to reflect where mobile home parks should be. Um, my recollection, because it was a pretty long debate, was that it was going to be village only. Okay, that, that's, and that's fine. And, yeah, and but I, yeah. I'm just speaking on my recollection, I'm not speaking on behalf. I mean, you're talking behalf. about a select board how many years ago? No, planning commission. Oh, planning commission. Well, it was a planning commission that okay. Jim was on. and. Yeah. Uh, it only really makes sense. Do you remember everything? No, no, I, I think we were talking about my scenes. It only really makes sense so to have them in the villages. That's right. where the sewer is. It was going to be exactly right, place. and that was ninety percent of the thing. There. But so somebody, somebody really was offended by it. You're going to have sewer. Do you remember what you decided? What the well, he said? he changed his mind about a lot of things. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and you know, I wanna I wanna be clear. I mean, one is you know the village areas now are, are you know fairly extensive, so mm-hmm. it does take in a lot of a lot of land area. So it's not necessarily overly restrictive, but also remember that any mobile home parks that are existing now you know can continue to exist. Pre-existing, non-conforming. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> you know, I, I don't want people that are listening maybe to get the impression that like by saying that you know you're, somebody's going to go around and start closing. Down. No, no, at, a, at a public so, hearing that's going to come up, yeah. and yeah. we're ready it for did. it. It happened with the okay. when we redid the town plan. Right. Word got out that we were going to close everything down and mm-hmm. change everything, and uh, yeah. we had to explain to them that our old grandfather. Yeah, okay. I did read that discrepancy. I forget exactly where it was. I think I did make a note of it, but uh, it does, and it's worded funny, Jim. Too, you don't remember where it is, do you? Because uh, it's, it's I, it, I don't. Um, it's it's quite 
definitive in the first part, and then it kind of opens the door in the second part for R R one, I think, like special permits or something. Um, yeah, I can tell you. Um, uh, one of the spots where. Well, was. let's go to to the uh, structures. That's just terrible. <laughs> Good that the chairman of the planning commission oh, knows his way around so, so well. In the yeah, so I think that one of the things that was confusing was in the in the old land use matrix. Yeah. Um, it was listed as not allowed anywhere. Oh, right. That's maybe and exactly where it was. And, yeah. and that was, um, you know, that's in addition to being um, not what's in yeah. the text. It's inconsistent page, with state statutes. So page sixty-three. Uh, land uh, the land use matrix mobile home park RR2 no village conditional RR1 not permitted so then everything else and this is what I remember changing it to just village as Ronnie had said and everything else was no but somewhere in here in the text it contradicts that you're absolutely right and I think when I looked at it I think it was more of a mistake than trying to open like a special door for But Jim's question was where do we want new mobile home parks? Well, I think well, I, I, the hook I was would vote for acres. village only going forward. <coughs> the hook was 25 acres though. Yeah. So that's in it. most places you wouldn't have 25 acres. In the village zone. Right. <coughs> right. That's right. correct. Was, so. You're, so like in, in, um, in the old bylaw in section 5 Point one, for example, rural residential two district. Oh. It, it says on uh, five. Well, and I might five have, one four six. Yeah, it says mobile home parks. Yeah, subject to review under the subdivision regs. And uh, section eight for this bylaw, consideration should be given to increased density in existing parks or abutting areas meeting the requirements. And that is part of the contradiction to just village. So if we could just uh, so, go village here yeah, so and I'll, then I'll be make, prepared to defend that in yep. a public hearing, I'll I'm make, all for it. I'll make that change. So I, I just have to redo my text and table a little bit, but that's not a right. difficult change. And we'll have a chance what, to vote there, on this as a board. There, um, isn't there an existing trailer park over behind um, Barber Pond? Yes, there is. Yes, yes. There is. yeah, yeah. There's about six trailers is out of village too. That's yeah. that's true. The existing ones that ain't going to have any effect on them. Correct? Right. Exactly they're, right. They're they're exactly right. They're no grandfathered. Effect. Okay. Pre-existing. Could, so could, it, okay. It, Let's take an example there. There's one trailer park that is next to the ball field. Could that trailer park buy the land there and move into the ball field down at the racetrack? I'm talking about the Green Mountain Trailer Park. It's an empty space next to it. Is the ballpark? Is it twenty-five acres? Well, would it have to be twenty-five acres. Know. Well, there's an expansion, but they're non-conforming now. So if if they couldn't conform to the twenty-five acre rule, they would not be allowed. I don't think to make that expansion. Okay. Well, if it's an if it's an existing use and they want to expand it, then it would be an expansion of a non-conforming use. So and, an and there's and there's a bylaw there. provision it, about how you do that. There's bylaw provisions for for the, how to do that. For the conditions you have to meet to do that, it would have to be reviewed by the DRB okay. and meet those okay. standards. Yeah. Because there's water and septic there. That's what bothers me. Okay. It not bothers me. It's just it's there. Water and sewer. And, so, and that's where it so ends, right? Septic goes anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. So, so the trailer uh, park down there, uh, across from Jellies and stuff like that, there is no sewer there. There's no right? sewer there. It ended at Alta Gardens or Green Mountain. That's where it ended. It, it right. ended right where we were just talking about, that trailer park. It used to be across from me. Right across from Jimmy there. Yep. That last trailer okay. park. Okay, all right. Next to the ball. And why, didn't it, why didn't we go down the hill to the one opposite Stewart's? Why don't we get down the hill to the hillside house? Why, why don't we provide Stewart's? water and sewer to all the businesses <laughs> down, down the there? The one next to the it was the when he was oh, there. We don't. There's no sewer in that area. I know. I know. I know. Why, why He's asking we, why did why it stop we? where it stopped? Well, that's Money. quite a ways from the end of that. Cause that's before the racetrack where it, where it stopped. I know. We went up a northwest hill. 
you know, with all ledge. No, it always has been. I was talking to young John Armstrong about this just the other day with the Hillside Yeah, Elf. that's who I talked to. Yeah, when, and, and, and I talked to Nelson about it. He said, actually, we should have because the money was there. All right. Okay. We can't do anything about that. Yeah, Hindsight's yeah, yeah. twenty twenty on where the sewer ends. But, with, <laughs> but, but where the sewer ends, we can put that in the bylaw. I know, but you got an empty ball. You got two empty spaces this side of the racetrack hmm. that could be used. Okay. I mean that that's. I, they got everything there. How yeah, and it's close enough to hook on to everything. Yeah. This is what, what do you say? How about a tiny about. house development? It doesn't matter. I, I don't <laughs> well, know. Why not? Sure, but, why but not? He's making a point here, and it, this this place is it could be. Trailers were the original tiny house. Yeah. Sure, they were very yeah. small. All right. <coughs> okay. Okay. So are we okay on that at least to get it into the draft, and then we can debate it, yeah. and and put it out to. Public scrutiny. Yep. yep, I'm good and, with that. And see what happens. I'm good with that change. Have we had any, has, 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 from your position on the DRB, mm -hmm. have there been feelers put out for adding um, trailer parks anywhere? None. We haven't heard of any development in a long, long time. Yeah. Not, I don't think since I've been on the Planning Commission, or the, certainly the DRB. So it's not a pressing issue. Mm -hmm. But things can become pressing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to have vacation. Well, right? them off at the when, pass. When you're, <laughs> when you least expect you them, they become bad, extremely pressing. Bad bylaws yeah. that are unclear. Well, yeah, we want to mostly want to make sure that the bylaws are clear, clear and reflect yeah, reality. Exactly so, right. Yeah. Um, so the next, the next big picture question I had, um, and I think that we've more or less decided that this one's okay, but I want to double check. So I uh, we talked about combining the um, village and commercial districts and just have a village district that takes in all of the uses that were allowed in both because yeah. they were essentially identical. The same. <laughs> and that was our discussion when you raised yeah. that the first time, and yeah. I think we agreed that it would be a good idea to combine those. There was two. maybe a little difference, but there wasn't very much. It, it, I know there was some discussion about, you know, revisiting the actual extent of the, you know, the commercial districts, but um, for starters, just <coughs> merging them. I'm all for it. Let's do it and see what the map looks like. We'll do it and see what the map looks like. Right. And see what the reaction is when we do it. Okay. I don't see any reason that anybody should object to that. But. I've been wrong before on that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll call it the we'll call it village district. Sure. Because because the commercial district nomenclature just implies just commercial. Yeah. But village implies it's, it's mixed. Mixed. <laughs> commercial residential. Okay. Um, all right. So then the the big one and um, that, that I do not have an answer to, and I have done. Nothing in anticipation of how's that for a prelude. No, that's <laughs> great. Nothing is the um, <laughs> is right now. I believe that most of the um, uh, the racetrack properties in the village district, and if not all of it, and You're right. and so it's it would be in this new combined district, and so it allows, you know, um, a variety of Broad everything use. from residential to you know retail to professional offices services to quote unquote light manufacturing and warehousing but there was some discussion i know and i think it may be in the in the plan as well about carving that area out and creating a, a like a combined commercial industrial district um, for the track property and uh, i haven't done anything with that because i I, I have not heard clear direction if, if you guys really want to go that way or not, especially given the, you know, the restrictions on the use of the property with all the flood hazard and river corridor well, that, stuff. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. But with, excuse me, I'm sorry. But combining those two, would it, would it make it more attractive to developers? Well, the only thing it would really do, because like I said, the village district, with the way it's owned now, allows almost everything. Yeah. The only thing it doesn't allow uh, necessarily are the things that are allowed currently in exclusively the in the industrial district, yeah. which are like heavy manufacturing um, and uh, solid waste management, hazardous waste management facilities, um, 
and things like eh, that's that's most so it'd be more like you know heavy you know <coughs> more heavy manufacturing that's um, you know currently limited to the existing industrial districts which are um, I think you know like the Mac molding property and then a, a you know a, a, but, one other small area but commercial also allows for housing too if I recall <coughs> Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, well, the, yeah. The village, the village district again allows for right high density housing, mixed use. So development. it'd be a combination village slash commercial. Yeah. That as would the rest of the village. But that's district. what's happening already. Yeah. I mean, it. it, it well, the, there the only, at the track, everywhere where yeah. you have <coughs> commercial is being folded into a, a village. Totally. Totally understand that. <coughs> but how, do you want to segregate? Heavy industrial, you know. You I don't think I don't think the racetrack ought to be zoned heavy industrial for residential. Use. I think it ought to be zoned conservation. Yeah. conservation. Mm. Oh, oh, me too. I mean, what? Well, that's going that, that's kind of going good. the other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what the owners think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they might not go for that one. Um, totally Who knows understand. who they are anyway. Well, I mean, you know, and okay. you, know, you can you can kind of, you can no, you can almost say you can zone it what you want, you know, but what it's actually going to be, the potential is is going to be pretty limited. I mean, you, yeah, th there are places there that are outside of those flood areas where you could get, you know, some commercial development and you could get some residential development, but like a, a large complex would be hard to do. I Thing. Hasn't something recently been talked about, Jim, without mentioning names, um, um, a com couple of commercial ventures, housing, a little middle income housing built in there as well on the northern most uh, end? Many times, but uh, the people I, that own the place don't seem to be interested in too much. I mean, no. it, it's well, it's their place to come forth and say, what are we, we going to do with it? Just let it be rotten, yeah, junkyard full of stuff from Williamstown's <coughs> buildings, uh, glass and stuff all over the place. The, the reason I ask that terrible. is because if mm -hmm. if we do a combined village slash <coughs> commercial industrial, um, we're not. I, I just want to make sure that we're keeping the door open. Um, for some sort of development there, as unlikely as that may be. Hadn't the door been open for a long time? But somebody to come into the door that owns the property right. is finding what what's the future of the place? Yeah. And it's a really disgusting piece of property. I right think now. you know. I think yeah. that the you know the probably the the you know the the best potential for cleaning it up is redevelopment. Right. The, you know. So the the question is, you know, what's realistic for redevelopment that would pay for the cleanup on the front end? And right. uh, that, I think maybe that's the the. the well, I think it's time for the state to say said. something about it. Somehow it needs to be condemned. You need to drive in there and take a look at the place. And if they start to put nasty stuff on the outside of it, which is on the back side of it, which no one sees, mm -hmm. they're going to start doing side, it on the front. Then, too. then, then you're going to get a scream out. There's going to be some. Why are we waiting here for somebody to do something and then we got to react to it? Mm -hmm. The door's been open for long enough, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, I, I think mean, so. the, the nineteen uh, what nineteen. Ninety-three yeah. or something like that was the last time. But what leverage do we have? We don't. It's what we're talking about now. That's we don't own it. Oh. We don't own it. <laughs> yeah. We, we, Mr. Soul has been here two or three times, and we've he's had his grandiose plans, and and then all of a sudden the river jumped in there and it kind of squashed everything. And we fought the battle over the uh, the guys are going to put the burn rubbish and junk in there and. If the longer it stays empty, oh. the more problems we're going to have. Would. Yeah. You don't leave empty property like that. It's something bad's going to happen to it. What if it were about, uh, zone conservation? Well, there's, there's... We don't have a conservation zoning district. We don't. Well, well we could have one. Well, we could, but <coughs> we haven't... No, no, we, try to have a time. we try to have a conversation about this with Clayton Park, where the people thought that they should go down there and do what they wanted to, and then we moved it into a conservation property, and they still came in and did what they wanted. So, I don't know. We've tried a lot of things, but I think that these people have been we've trying to kiss their butts for a long time to do something there, and no one wants to step forward and uh, 
So, okay. you know. so our goal is to figure out how to zone that. Sucker. Hey, he's got a good point. If you made somebody might say, whoa, you know, we're going to do something. Somebody needs to come forward and do well, something. Condemn the damn place. If it were a conservation district, uh, would it allow them to still be dumping rubbish? Yeah, very good question. And I, was wondering, oh, I, would, I would say Hura, no. No. I, I would have say something no. to say about Hura that. Hura would. Rubbish yes. right along the river, you know? That's not. A lot of people use the river, and uh, yeah. they, I don't know. a lot of people eat the fish. That they, they yeah. it's good well, fish now yeah, they, there were no, a good forty it's years there. I, <laughs> I don't. Know. We, we've been at this a long I time. I mean that that like you know the existing use of like um, uh, you know um, depositing debris or whatever there <laughs> that that might that might also you know exist outside of local. You know, zoning regulations too. I mean, you might that might be something to talk to the yeah you know, the Department of Environmental Conservation. The, there about. you go. Now, now if, okay. if if the river jumps in there again, here's what's going to be. It's going to be a lot of glass. It's going to be a lot of chairs. It's going to be a lot of tables. There's going to be a lot it's of fire extinguishers, carts, all going down the river because they're all on the backside. No one sees it. You have yeah, to drive in all, there and physically that's look. That's all the deposit. That probably is in the. At the river corridor area. It is. And whether or not we from here to the uh, the window. Yeah, whether or not we create a river corridor district, it's still the river corridor. Yeah. And and yeah. so the state is so, probably going to okay, have some I, legitimate concern about. So who that. would write to them, and what would you say? Well, let's, let's let me look into that a little bit. <laughs> I'm but, happy but, to do but the we letter. We could we could talk to the you know so I could try to find out That's from somebody right. in the yes. rivers. Division, you can measure the distance like between where the stuff is all being thrown out the back window, yeah. and it's to that window to the river. I'll go down and measure with yeah. you, Jimmy. Yeah. Well. Don't drive in there with the glass all over the place. Yeah. So that's yeah. one to look at, and I, I'll I can I'll I can follow up. And, is and this debris this. that's originating in Williamstown and being trucked up here? Some of it's being used a little bit now, but it's all been crushed up, and there's two sites there, huge monster sites, and. Uh, they, they, they have it right away through my property, so they take some of it out a little bit, but not a lot. I'm hoping how, maybe how they'll put they... some in the fire department in Williamstown where they're going to build the fire department. I don't know, well I know what you're going to say. By what authority yeah. did they did bring they that in there? Dump that stuff in well, there. they brought the authority of Nelson in, and I called, <laughs> well, no, I, called, oh, yeah. I called Sola and told him what was going on. And he said, oh, it's all right, Jim, it's all right. Somehow it was between Tam, Nelson, and it was only going to be there a short time. And, it's and they're going to move it out. Two years. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it was supposedly in, bought in there to be crushed up. Right. And then taken out. That's it. And it was crushed up. It was left there for a long time in big uh, yeah. metal and all kinds of bricks and everything. Actually, it's uh, Brofman Science Center is one of the buildings. And uh, a yeah. pretty huge building. And then more came. And uh, uh -huh. then somebody did come in and grind it and all Solar's up. getting paid. Per truckload. Somebody's been making money on this. Sure. Because well, they paid a lot of money to it, get it ground out. Give it back out. to the people who brought it to you. <laughs> well, right. it's going to go back to uh, a trucking company that I, I don't know. The guys that work over there in Williamstown said they were very unreliable people. <laughs> they were hauling all this stuff over here. and. Uh, I, I do business with all those well. guys in Williamstown. <laughs> and, uh, See, Jim, Jim gets all the news over the lunch counter. Yes, he yeah, does. Yes, he does. Yes, we, I do. We need him. No, they don't just say, they're just talking he's to each listening. other. I'm just listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> 165 well, million think, dollar uh, museum. So, so for, sandwich for, man. For this. No, okay. no uh, that's just, the racetrack's going to drive us all crazy. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's, it's, the only, it's, it's the only individual piece of real estate in the region that has its own section in the regional plan. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. noteworthy for that. Um, it's good. Wait, the history that and several yeah. other things. So, um, so do you want to like basically leave it in the newly combined village commercial district for the purposes of at least finishing this, presenting it in yeah. in yeah. The, the draft? I agree. <coughs> I think that's irresponsible. Oh, interesting. You okay. think it should be its own? I, I think we've just, just opening that up. We've like got to do better than. I hope he's going to have somebody look at, at 
So you think what I say is is a problem. It, you, if the river rises again, it's going to put a lot of stuff in there that, if that the we river talk rises about. Again? And there is it is lying there in the ground. I mean, fire extinguishers, big cars, chairs, all the back windows are broken. Everything. That's all going to go. The roofing, the south. roofing, uh, the wind has blown the roof tile down there. The big beach, all the stuff is in there. There's two barns full of tires in there, full of old tires. Someone's mm -hmm. going to set them on fire. They've tried a couple times. Ah, uh, great. Those are nice. Uh, I know, so but wait. it all sits there. No, yeah. one, no one wants to so discuss Sid, it. So, Sid, what's what your thinking? Proposing? My thinking is that I think we should create a conservation district and zone it uh, as conservation land. The problem with that is that Solars is going to have the right to sue us for devaluing his property sure. by making it less developable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's exactly right. Okay. All right. Well, so, so you know, like, so you know, Sid Bright knows this better than than the rest of us. Is like what what constitutes a, a taking? A taking. And mm -hmm. you know, so you, you can do a regulatory taking under certain you know narrow um, conditions. Like, if you're so restricting the the land that you've taken mostly economically viable use, but it is being done to prevent, uh, you know, a public harm or a serious, you know, public, sure. public health and safety hazard, then, you, you know, that's something you can do. Um, so you do carefully, but you could do it. And, and um, you know, that that's about other, otherwise, you know, you, you're kind of... Um, Hamstrung. Well, you can, you can you can severely restrict uses, but you have to leave you know some. You have to leave an economic use. You have to leave okay. some economic use. And by the way, use, having otherwise. at least in Massachusetts, having a pretty view is an economic use. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. So so without going to the DRB, they've turned that place into a recycling plant. I know they have. Mm -hmm. yep. And and I have told repeated boards of selectmen. Mm -hmm. That they yeah. don't have the they power have, to give these permits. They don't have the authority to do and that. I had Walker down there. Walker went down there with me. I had Walker down there twice when they were dumping it. He talked to people and they're going to do this. And it's going to be, it's going to leave the grounds. The guys were grinding up there and it was going to leave the grounds. But it's still there. Hmm. But the owner said, oh, Thank it's okay, you. Jim. So do we have a, a leg to stand on here? Uh, well, I think there's... There's, there's some heavy-duty legal work that has to be done if you're going to try to impose but zone it conservation and take away some of the economically viable uses that may exist there. I don't know how many there are because of the, because of the river and its impacts on the property. But, and, and it, frankly, it requires research and thinking, and it's beyond this board to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But this board... Because someone will come in and make suggests that you know what you what you can't do without compensating financially the owners is, is say we're going to turn the property into conservation land for the benefit of the community because we want to conserve the open space and all you can do is grow grass yeah I mean, right you, you, you know, can't then, take that away right you, you can't you, go to that yeah extent. you're you because you know then you're you're not you're taking it to provide a public benefit instead of prevent a public harm, and that's kind of where the sure. the line in the sand is. Sure. So you you really have to say, yeah, the reason that this is being done is because if we don't do it, there's going to be, you know, imminent peril to the community or mm -hmm. you know, not just well, this well, community but yeah. down and, the and river. I don't know what the standard in is Hussein. in Vermont, but it, in Berlin. other states, I don't think it's well defined. You have to have you have to have a study <laughs> yeah. to back up your conclusion. You'd probably want to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. expensive study, sure. probably. probably. In the River Group, uh, there could be an issue. Uh, hoorah. Hoorah. They could make a complaint. Uh, they, uh, somebody has probably given an illegal permit more than once. Uh, so a higher authority needs to come in and see what the person in Powell did to give this permit and it, why, is, why does it still exist? This stuff has been here too long. You clearly need all that before you would change your yeah. bylaws to reflect. We get okay. the ball rolling That's on zone. something. Yeah. So okay. Then the other the other suggestion was to write a letter to 
Who was that? The environmental. The environmental. Oh, I'd, I'd, something. I'd have to do a little research to figure out yeah. just the right person to talk to. Sure. And then probably have somebody come down and, and you know, take a look at it. See, see if, if we have a case. Well, you know, I mean, just 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 quite aside from the zoning thing to, to deal with right. the debris or the dumping and see if that's something that is, you know, inconsistent with state rules and regulations. Well, there's black bags down there also. Yeah. I mean, garbage dumping. bags? Yeah. Sure. Sure. That's something. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, the backside they're dumping them aren't they? It, it yeah. certainly seems like somebody should want to take a look at that, and so I, yeah. I'll, yeah. I can track down, you know, the right person to, to Do come Do you want me to speak with that? Would it help to speak to people at Hoora as well? Or? Sure. Okay, I'll yeah. Well, food for thought. Yeah. I don't think we're going to determine that tonight. But you no, but you were looking for some direction as you prepare. A draft. Well, yeah, the only thing was, was like, if you were going to create another district there, then I'd have to create another section of the bylaw, which I could certainly do, but I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, we don't I, know what to do. Like, the default right now is to leave it in this in the village slash commercial village district. Um, otherwise, you know, I can create a new district, whatever that might be, but... We can also... I'm not advocating this. Every time there was a plan for that thing, they changed what the... They changed the zone. Mm -hmm. so you can put industrial there if you want. You I can do I this if you want. I saw that. You can, I mean, come on, we've been doing that for, what, 30 years? Sid went one-on-one on one with the lady from Burlington. <laughs> well, I've been, she was good. I've been, I've been that, around that for, I've been around uh, doing regional planning for over 30 years, and I can, I can think back on a whole uh, sequence of fascinating development concepts and site pl con conceptual mm -hmm. site yeah. plans for that yeah. property <laughs> I've yeah. seen over the years. That property and some other ones. I've seen, seen, I've, seen, like I've, seen um, I've seen like equestrian centers and yep. I've seen um, shopping plazas and I've seen conference centers and of course the old casinos sure. and, and yeah, well, housing, college housing developments. And, we were that close so. to doing about four things that you said. So. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Teaser raised the price <laughs> more money he thought. We were close. We he made a lot of money on that place. Well, Ronnie's right. They kept changing the zoning every time somebody <laughs> and the had an idea. The Rooney's could have done anything they wanted with it. They could have had anything. Okay, so okay. I propose that we leave the racetrack in the commercial in the village for in the village place. commercial yeah. Yeah. At, my, but at the same time do this other my point big, was it research. can be changed prior to the end it can be changed after, after we adopt right. new bylaw you can change a section add a section amend a section for a really good reason so it doesn't look like some right. kind of spot zoning like come on down yeah. you know we'll, we'll accommodate you yeah yeah, I mean, it may, maybe it's a maybe it's a, a project for your next municipal planning grant is to, you know, have, look, yeah, look yeah. at look at that property and yeah. figure out what the long term plan for it should be. Uh, They've had all kinds of studies for it. Oh they yeah, up with nothing. We've had a lot of studies. We had a thirty thousand dollar study. What did, what did Williams College say to do with it? Basically, entertainment and light manufacturing. Yeah, they were gonna they were gonna have a Butcher, the butchery there. Well, it was a lot of house, yeah. What? One of many things. Yeah. We should have had the Dorset Horse Show. Have that was a close. butchery. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Motel that space. That was a of the, yeah. that area. Oh, my God. Motel space was what bothered everybody. Williamstown didn't like it. Well, they all have $400,000 motor homes. Oh I don't my know God. why oh. they need motels. I know, I know. It's just oh, maybe those are just for the horses. They had the barns. Right. They had everything. <laughs> So let's, now let's do this. Village for now, and then we'll cases. continue to kick that around. Okay. okay. That's the consensus of the board. I'm do we opposed. need a motion? He's officially no. opposed. Huh? Uh, no. no, but the motion carries four or five well, to one. Well, well, hang on. If, if you can tell us... Uh, uh, I don't have uh, any short-term solution. I, my viscera just tells me... That that's the thing that to do. you don't huh? want to have that track be village commercial. Because well, I of think, the potential. I, I, think, I think we said at the meeting back in November, one of the, maybe one of the, 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 the problems with having it zoned in an unrealistic <laughs> way is that is it, the attention in Pownell always seems to turn to that property. It's mm -hmm. like yep. that, some big development there is going to be... 
the salvation of the Gentiles. Yeah, it's, it's like if we keep, you like know, it's it like before. maybe if we looked yeah. at yeah. the more like, you know, mixed use village development in other, in Connell Center and Connell Village and North Connell, maybe in aggregate that would have more. Of it would a, take some of the emphasis. You know, yeah, but, of, but it's like, it's just like I said, I mean, just because, you know, I've only been here half as long as you. Jim, but but as like boy, every every few years comes along, you know, the grand plan for that property and well, now the elephant in the room it is, <laughs> but now it's the white elephant. Yeah, <laughs> and we're stuck with it, yeah. and uh, it, it's it's needs to be something. The more when you go look well, at all right, it, Barbara, why don't you make why a motion that, that, that for the, that the racetrack be zoned village commercial? Go and ahead and. Sid wants it to will, say no. No, no, and we'll re we'll reconsider. We will keep thinking about it. Yes. and reconsider. That was my point. When yeah. an opportunity presents itself, if ever. Oh, we can leave it. Leave it. Just table it until we get maybe some Jim people look at it. Jim needs a little guidance okay. on preparing a section. So I would entertain a motion to leave this as so village commercial and you slash it commercial. As village commercial. Do I have Jim's a second? Sake, I'll second it. Uh, any any more discussion? I think we've had the discussion. We know what direction we'd like to go in. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Then that just made my job easier. So yeah. um, <laughs> took, us, <laughs> took a while. Took us much too long to do that. But <laughs> yeah. well, well, I don't, you know, that's, know, that's, that's a, I, I hadn't even considered that. It's I, a, it's yeah, a big issue. Like I said, you know, every about. time the regional plan comes around and the, the land use section up. of the regional plan comes around, that's just a property that just doesn't neatly fit in any category. Yeah, anyway. Right. right. So right. it's all. It's not an easy. It's okay. not an easy nut to crack. There's people in Parliament waiting and waiting and waiting for somebody to come here and just wave the magic wand again. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Not gonna happen. The, 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 the tough thing is that it's, 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 absolutely, it's absolutely beautiful piece of property. It yeah. is. It's, oh it's gorgeous. <laughs> I do remember I was a little kid. I remember the farm. It was yeah. there. I remember going by it. Yeah. Holy yeah. mackerel. Yeah. But I think gorgeous. then it, something has to happen and that we have to find ways to move forward on. And there yeah. may be so rather bold ways to again. move forward. If yeah. there's toxic waste there is. being dumped behind there, then there we, should, yeah. we should get it declared a brown field. Yep. Yeah. Not really. That's no, not but a it, serious problem. Some needs to happen. Well, guys, be. I mean, if somebody comes <coughs> in with a, with a, you know, a, a redevelopment proposal, then probably a uh, brownfield assessment is warranted, and we're happy to help you out there. So. And and if somebody comes in with a viable pr development proposal, I'll eat the my planning hat. the planning <laughs> well maybe, but the planning commission can go through a process to rezone it very quickly, yeah, and the sure. town can react to it very quickly. Yeah. Never seen that happen in Bennington <laughs> County, have we? No. Uh, no. Salmo is a classic. <laughs> So the mill was sitting there empty. So I'll. Uh, so okay. my 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 plan is I, you know I. There's a lot of little pieces now, but um, I I think I have all of the pieces I need to okay. to, to finish the first draft of the puzzle, and so I, I will try at least a week in advance of your next meeting to get you a, a full draft. The only thing that we haven't talked about that I need to play around with a little bit is the definitions. So okay. you have a section on definitions now, which is generally pretty good, but there's a few things that we've added and tweaked that I need to... Sure. And I'll, I'll highlight, out, obviously, anything that's added or changed in the definitions. So. Well, you're going to try and find somebody in the state that might be able to give us guidance on that property and mm -hmm. zoning it? Yeah, the, I probably would be able to do a better job of getting some from the state to look at the environmental um, right. side mm -hmm. of it um, as far as the like you know that they'll they'll want to keep a wide berth from offering you any clear yeah. input mm -hmm. on local zoning decisions you know, mm -hmm. they'll say that's really up to you that here's they'll say here are the constraints ask them to the solve that part of it but, right. yeah. but it would help to know to know that it would help to know what yeah, no, I'll, 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 you know, I, okay. I, I, I'm not, I have not taken a tour of the backside of that property to see what's there, so that's kind of news to me. When the, when so I'll, um, I will uh, do my best to uh, 
to get okay. the right people to take a look at it. And um, I think we I'm should all. We, we should go as a board. I was going to say, did we answer all your thirty thousand foot questions? Those are all like those are all my big picture questions. Excellent. So our takeaway is to go back and read that section six and okay, especially read the whole bylaw six point five on. Well, well we have been reading the sections. Kind of he's been, been I mean, been us. through um, everything. We even went through all of section eight, which was a really long section, and I, we got through that successfully. Mm -hmm. But when when we get through it, we'll, we will go through it from page one all the yeah. way through to the end. But since that section six five or whatever it is, the river quarter section is a whole new thing. Take a take a a, a close look at that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Six point. Uh, Two and four. All right. Okay. And then I'm, you know, I'm I'm intrigued by this conservation zone. So uh, let, well, let's find out as much as we can find yep. out. <clears throat> We're not doing much right now. Jim, thank you. We're going to meet the third week of February. Yep. So it's on uh, my calendar. I think. Is it? Yeah. I think it is. That's a. I don't know. Is it twenty first? Is it? <coughs> One two. It'll be the eighteenth. February eighteenth. It'll be the okay. third Tuesday. Jim, I live up on in a um, right. in a Let's dead get the zone. Mail get out of here. Yeah. Sure. So I had a lot of trouble with my internet. So I didn't know they were bringing all that crap in. Send it, uh, instead of yeah, sending yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. to the town email. Somebody down there with the camera. Me, uh, if you could send it to my home email. Uh, sure. Okay, my so I'm going to write it down to there for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm disappointed. Just um, so long. Write it on the bottom of that and I'll I hear you, man. Down there. I've called him a couple of times. You don't need to have the call. No. Oh, oh, all uh, all smoke oh, yeah, yeah. errors. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I say every time, you know, I've called him a couple of times and say every time we went to play he always mentioned that to him. Come on, please. Come on. Knock him. Mike, are we done? No, we're not quite done. Thank, But thank you, Jim. <clears throat> I think Jim's all done. So now we just need to uh, just uh, quickly here, um, I'll just cover the mail. This is very brief. There is a, a permit issued for a wastewater system and potable water supply permit for Armstrong Inc. 7757 U.S. Route 7, Pottle, Vermont. I believe that's the hillside house. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so they went through the proper permitting and like it could be so wastewater system and got all that fixed right okay. Pennington County Regional Commission we talked about this a few minutes earlier the uh, BCRC is sending a letter on behalf of the collaborative Mount Scutney Prevention Partnership MAP MAPP and other members of the Bennington County uh, Regional Prevention Partnership for substance substance misuse prevention that are able to provide technical support to municipalities regarding Commercial cannabis legislation currently in development. It impacts the planning commission not greatly, I think, but um, we may have talked a little bit about health and things like that in our town plan. I, I don't recall. Yeah, I think one of the things in that really was pointing to the VLCT proposal, and and I, I ran it by um, some of the legislators, legislators who said it's really still very much up in the air which direction oh, yeah. the legislation is going to go on this stuff but th there is this notion of like whether towns are opt in or if they have to opt out so like can you can, can you get in a situation where you don't allow cannabis retail in your town unless you agree to it or is it by default unless you don't agree to it so that's kind of the VLCT and they say if you do allow it in your town then there ought to be um Local taxes that would benefit you. Right, love it. So that's love all. That's all. I'm loving at the hillside house. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think we should have a zone CC commercial yeah. cannabis. Yeah. Sure. Right. And we just have it all in one. Won't be at the racetrack. No, no not at the racetrack. Nobody it's wants to see all that flooded. All right. Okay. I have no other too. business. Does I anyone else? Motion. We adjourn. A second. Uh, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all. Thank yeah. you. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jim. <laughs>